Prayer for the 2022 National and Local Elections Let us pray that the forthcoming National and Local Elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered this morning in the joy of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that our risen Lord may give joy to our hearts, may give faith to those who are discouraged, and may give love, especially to those who are living in fear. And so to prepare our hearts to receive the graces from our risen Lord, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and acknowledge the infinite mercy and love of our Lord. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. The right hand of the Lord has is struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises, a lamb that sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contented in that combat is stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary declaring, what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ is living, the Lord of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen, to Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered like in our Gospel reading today on the first day of the week. The day when Jesus rose again from the dead. Alam ko po, masaya kayo ngayong umaga na ito. Hindi ko lang kita sa mga mask ninyo, nakangiti kayo. No? Pero alam kong masaya tayo ngayong umaga na ito na nagtitipon. At pagkatapos ng dalawang taon na mayroong lockdowns, today, we are able to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord together as one family. What a great source of joy and consolation for many of us. My dear brothers and sisters, today is the first day of the Easter season. Mahaba-haba po na ipagdiriwang natin ang panahon ng pagkabuhay. Ngayon, ang pinakaunang araw. And today also, in our Gospel reading, we hear of the first sign of the resurrection. And that is the empty tomb. Ang pinakaunang tanda na si Jesus nga ay muling na buhay ay ang libingan na walang laman. The empty tomb is a sign of the resurrection because when they went in, there was no body. And there was no corruption inside the tomb. Hindi nabubulok ang katawan. Sapagkat pagpasok nila ay wala ang katawan doon. Nakita nilang nakatupi mabuti ang telang ibinalot sa katawan. That is why it is a sign of the resurrection when they entered the tomb it was empty the body was not there there was no corruption inside the empty tomb but my dear brothers and sisters I think there is not 
one empty tomb in our story this morning. I think there are three more empty tombs in the story. Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the other disciple. Hindi lamang ang libingan na walang laman ang empty tomb, pati si Maria Magdalena, si Pedro, at ang isa pang alagad na kasama nila, sila rin parang mga empty tomb. The three disciples who came early in the morning, they were like empty tombs. First, Mary of Magdala. She came early in the morning to look for the body of the Lord. And when she came into the tomb, she saw the cover of the tomb opened. She was not able to find the body of the Lord. And so she ran and said to the disciples, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. My dear brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene was looking for the truth. Her heart is now empty of lies and deceit. Her heart is filled with truth. It was like an empty tomb, empty of lies, but filled with truth. Ang puso ni Maria Magdalena ay parang libingan na walang laban. Wala itong kasinungalingan at ang gusto niya, makita at mahanap ang katotohanan saan nila dinala ang katawan ng Panginoon. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a sign of the resurrection. If our hearts are already empty of lies, and if our hearts are filled with truth. Kaya nga sinasabi minsan natin, kapag nakita tayo ng ibang tao, ay, kristyano pa naman siya, pero nagsishare siya ng fake news, nako, parang hindi ka pa empty tomb. Baka ang puso mo ay puno pa ng kasinungalingan. At ikaw naman, pakalat ka ng pakalat ng kasinungalingan. Mary of Magdala was an empty tomb. She was empty of all the lies and she want to pursue the truth. The second one was Peter. Peter, who formerly denied Jesus. Now, in our first reading today, we saw that it was Peter who courageously preached the risen Lord to the many peoples. Si San Pedro na nakita natin, itinatwa, itinanggi niya si Jesus ng tatlong beses. Ngayon, ang kanyang puso ay wala ng takot. Ito ay pinuno na ni Jesus ng pananalig at lakas ng loob. Peter became an empty tomb. Empty 
of fear, but filled with faith and courage for the Lord. Mga minamahal na kapatid, si San Pedro ay para ring isang libingan na wala ng laman. Inalis na ng Panginoong Jesus ang takot sa kanyang puso at pinuno ito ng pananalig at lakas ng loob para ipahayag ang salita ng Diyos. And lastly, the other disciple. We will see in the story that during the Last Supper, this other disciple has many questions in his heart. He questioned Jesus a lot during the Last Supper. But now, when the other disciple entered the empty tomb, according to our gospel passage, he saw and he believed. His heart was now empty of questions. His heart was now filled with love. And when he saw, because of love, there were ne no more questions, but he believed. Marami siyang tanong, marami siyang gustong malaman, pero ngayon, ang kanyang puso ay wala ng tanong, kundi ito ay pinununa ni Jesus ng pag-ibig. Kaya noong makita niya ang libingang walang laman, naniwala na siya. My dear brothers and sisters, we are the empty tombs. And just as people believe in Jesus because they saw that the tomb was empty, people will also believe that Jesus is risen when they see us, the empty tombs. Kung paanong ang mga tao ay naniwala na si Jesus ay muling nabuhay nang makita nila ang libingang walang laman. Tayo ngayon ang mga libingang wala ng laman. Kapag nakita tayo ng tao, masasabi nila, buhay si Kristo. Tanungin po natin ang ating sarili ngayon. Kapag nakita ba ako ng mga tao, masasabi ba nilang, buhay si Kristo? O pag nakita nila ang pag-uugali ko, baka masabi nila, naku, patay na patay si Kristo sa tao na yan. No? Walang buhay si Kristo sa tao na yan. Have we become the empty tombs proof that Jesus is risen? Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, kapag nakita tayo ng mga tao, ang sasabihin agad nila, Kristiyano siya. Pero bakit ganyan? Katoliko siya. Nagsisimba at nagdarasal araw-araw. Pero nakikipag-away sa social media. Naku yan, no? Ang daming nakikipag-away sa social media. Pati ako inaaway na ngayon, no? Wala nga akong ginagawa sa kanila. Di ko sila kilala, no? Nakikipag-away kahit sa pari ngayon, no? Di ko naman sila inaaway. Pero makikipag-away sa'yo. Minsan kung sino pa yung mga nagsisimba... Sino pa ang araw-araw na sa simbakan? Nako, share ng share ng fake news. Nakikipag-away pa sa iyo. Are you an empty tomb? 
maybe our hearts are already filled with lies. And lies can corrupt. Kaya nga ang salitang corruption, ang ibig sabihin niyan, hindi lang pagnanakaw. Ang ibig sabihin ng corruption, nabubulok. Baka nabubulok na ang kalooban natin. At ngayon, gustong linisin ni Jesus para ang ating mga sarili ay mapuno hindi ng korupsyon, kundi mapuno ng buhay, katotohanan, at pag-asa. That is why in our second reading today, a reminder from St. Paul to the Colossians, he said that you have already died with Christ and your life is now also with Christ. Namatay tayo sa kasalanan, pero buhay na tayo kay Jesus. Wala na tayo sa libingan. Wala na tayo sa nabubulok na libingan, kundi tayo ay buhay na sa ating Panginoong Jesus. After this homily, we will renew our baptismal vows and we will respond. It is as if telling Jesus, I am renewing my life in you. I will become an empty tomb, empty of lies, empty of fake news, empty of corruption, empty of murder and words that kill. And I will become a true Christian, believing in the truth, sharing the truth, becoming good and supporting goodness. Pagkatapos po ng homily ko ay tatanungin ko kayo at magpapanibago tayo ng ating pangako sa Diyos. Itatakwil natin ang masama. Itatakwil po natin ang sinungaling. Itatakwil natin ang pagnanakaw. At sasabihin natin sa Diyos, ako ay Kristiyano, naniniwala sa kabutihan sa katapatan, sa katotohanan. At kapag nakita tayo ng mga tao, masasabi nila, yan ang Kristiyano. Hindi nabubulok, hindi patay. Ang tunay na Kristiyano ay buhay sa ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Please all stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us now renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. First, my dear brothers and sisters, we will renounce Satan and sin. Your response is, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, 
the author and prince of sin? I do. We shall now profess our faith in God. Dear brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Let us now place our needs before God, our Father, rejoicing because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that like St. Peter, he may continue to lead the Church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for things that are in heaven and be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicted our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and for those who suffer because of the scourge of war, especially in Ukraine, that God may cleanse the world from all violence and misuse of power so that all may live in tranquility and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord, who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may rise to eternal life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead as he promised us. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you through the same risen Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated.
us all stand. Brave brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your Church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Santo, 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 Panginoong Diyos na makapangyarihan, Napupuno ang langit at lupa ng kalwalatian mo. O sana, o sana, sa kaitaasan. O sana, o sana, sa kaitaasan. Pinagpala ang napaniging mo. Sana, O sana, sa kaitaasan, O sana, O sana, sa kaitaasan, sa kaitaasan. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, 
he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Sa pamamagitan ni Kristo, kasama niya at sa Kanya, ang lahat ng parangal at papuri ay sa iyo, Diyos amang makapangyarihan, kasama ng Espiritu Santo, magpasawalang hanggan. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the Resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you for joining us in this Easter Sunday Mass. Salamat po at masaya po akong makita na magkakasama ang pamilya na nagsimba ngayong linggo ng muling pagkabuhay. Special thanks to those who are standing at the back, those who are standing outside and who braved the rains. Salamat po at pasensya na po. Salamat po sa pagtsatsyaga nyo kahit umuulan ay tayo'y nakapagsimba po at nabasbasan ng ating Panginoong muling nabuhay. Special thanks also for those who are joining us through the online broadcast of this Mass. Fellow Filipinos who are working and living abroad, but are one with us in the celebration of this Easter Sunday Eucharist. We also would like to thank all those who have served us, not only today, but our servers, volunteers, and servants, our staff, who have been working very hard in the past week to serve us in the Holy Week and the Easter celebrations. May our risen Lord bring your family and loved ones his blessings, protection, and especially new life in him so that whenever people see us, they may see empty tombs, empty of evil, but filled with Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing now and forever. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance now and forever. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner in this earth be united with Him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Maligayang pagkabuhay ni Kristo sa inyong lahat. Happy Easter po. Music